managing a crisis in real time seems to be what I am doing all the time. A little over 35 years ago, I reached my hand in my pocket and I pulled a coin out to toss to begin a game. It was in Tucson, Arizona. It was a bunch of eight-year-olds. It's a Pop Warner game. Commercials. Ah, uh, the closest thing to a commercial was a sign above the refreshment stand that said, Frank's Gridiron Frank's. The crowd, yeah, we had a big crowd. We had about 75 people on hand. Of course, they were all the family and the parents of the kids who were playing the game. And when I tossed the coin, I said to the kid, I said to the captain, I said, call it while it's in the air, and flipped. There's dead silence. And I looked down, and there's the coin sitting on the ground. The kid hadn't said a word. Thought to myself, Crisis? Do I have a crisis here? Is there pressure? Come on. It's eight-year-olds. There's 75 people there. You know, no big deal. We picked it up. We tossed it again. No crisis, no pressure. Flash forward 30 years, and I stood at the midfield of Reliance Stadium in Houston, Texas, poised to toss, poised to toss the coin for the uh, Super Bowl 38. Commercials? Yeah. $6.5 million a minute. That's $108,000 a second for commercial time. The crowd, a little over 75,000 people on hand. 360 million people watching on TV in the U.S. alone. And speaking of large crowds, i, I got to tell you, it's obvious that I'm nervous up here. I just am not comfortable with crowds. Never have been. I think it goes back to when I was a kid. I always kind of wondered about my roots and I finally got the nerve up one day. I was about six years old, and I walked up to my dad. He was sitting in the living room reading the paper, and I, I says, uh, Dad, was I adopted? And he kind of looks up at me and puts the paper down. He's got that look on his face like, I didn't really want to deal with this right now, but okay. And finally, he says, yes, son, you were. But after about six months, they changed their mind. They gave you back to us. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really what started the slow self-esteem problems and the reason that I do everything that I can to avoid large audience. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that coin toss, too, at Super Bowl 38. How many of you know the name Y.A. Tittle? Yeah, we got maybe 15% of the audience. You know, I tell you what, you make me feel old. Every year, that number in the audience gets smaller and smaller and smaller, people who know Y.A. Tittle. Last year, the first Washington Redskins game I had, Robert Griffin Jr., RG3, comes up to me at the first opportunity with his hands out. And Ed Hockley, man, this is an honor to meet you. I've been watching you on TV since I was a kid. I said, yeah, thanks, Robert. That's going to cost you 15 yards on the next play. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> Y.A. Tittle, for the many of you who don't know, he was the Peyton Manning he was the, the Eli Manning or the Brett Favre or the Aaron Rodgers uh, the, of, of, of the late 50s and the early 60s. He was the quarterback that held all the records. He was the star. And I didn't even know Mr. Tittle was still alive. This was the picture that I was familiar with of Y.A. Tittle, very famous picture of him that I'm sure some of you recognize. Well, this is where I met Y.A. Tittle. He's the white-haired gentleman just over my left shoulder. He was the honorary captain at that Super Bowl toss. And we're out there now, 360 million people on TV, 175,000 in the stands. There's about 20 seconds to go till the toss, and Mr. Tittle, Tittle turns to me and he says, Ed, I get the coin, right? And I said, Mr. Tittle, I'm sorry, but that, it goes to the Hall of Fame. He said, Mr. Ed, I, I promised it to my grandson. I said, Mr. Tittle, I, you don't understand. You see those security guards sitting over there? When I'm done with this toss, I give them the coin. And it's their responsibility to get it to Canton, Ohio, the football hall of fame where resides every coin that's been tossed in every Super Bowl. He says, Ed, I promised it to my grandson. <laughs> Crisis? Pressure? 360 million people waiting for me to do something. Pressure is just something in your mind. And if you ignore it, it doesn't exist. Pressure is only there when you think that there's pressure there. And if you choose to ignore it, it's just like eight-year-old kids and 75 parents in the stands watching. I turned to the camera by next to me and I said, no matter what you do, do not zoom in on the coin. And I reached in my left pocket and I pulled out my trusty silver dollar that I tossed in every game all year long and I had as my backup coin. 
And I'll tell you what, Y.E. Tittle's grandson has got the coin that was actually tossed in Super Bowl 38, and the coin that's sitting in the Hall of Fame got no closer to that coin toss than my right pocket. That is how you deal with pressure and crisis. You prepare so that it never becomes a crisis in the first place.